In this video, we'll show you how to prepare your existing deck frame for your new TimberTech decking. Before starting, you will need the proper TimberTech installation manual for the specific decking material you have chosen, along with this list of tools. You'll also need your deck plan for the size, layout, and railing, and you'll need to make sure your pre-existing framing is securely attached to the house. The first step before installing any decking is to make sure your deck framing is structurally sound. Check for damage to the wood caused by moisture in the elements. These can include soft spots, breaks, splits, or cracks. Make sure the frame is securely attached to the home and ensure a drip cap, flashing, or other system is in place at the ledger board to move water away from the home and deck. Inspect all fasteners for corrosion and ensure they are sound and rated for external use. Exterior grade structural bolts and fasteners may need to be added or replaced to reinforce the framing. Ensure all joists are even and in plane across the tops of the boards. Timber tech decking will conform to the contour of the joists to which it is attached. To avoid a wavy looking deck surface, use string lines frequently to make sure all joists are even and in plane to create an even surface along tops of joists. If any of your existing joists are too high, you can either use a power planer or sander to reduce the excessive height, or you can cut the existing fasteners, then lower and reattach the joist. If a joist is crowned in the middle, you can even it out with a power planer or sander. For reverse crowned joists that sit too low, you can apply sister joists by sandwiching the board between two new joists. For joists that sit too low, you can cut the fasteners, raise and reattach, or apply sister joists by sandwiching the board between two new joists. For a joist that is too high, too low, crowned or reverse crowned, you always have the option to simply remove and replace the joist. As always, be sure the top of the new joist is even and in plane with surrounding joists. If you are installing new joists, make sure to measure and ensure they are the same size. Lumber sizes can vary and be inconsistent. If your new joists are dimensionally inconsistent, a notch or shim may be needed to make sure the tops of joists are in plane, especially in applications where the joists rest on a support beam. Be aware of dimensional variation in the structural lumber when placing your joist hangers. Best practice is to set all the joists in alignment along the tops, then install the joist hangers. Remember to use string lines often to ensure that any new joists are in plane across the tops. For step two, we need to make sure the deck framing has proper joist spacing per the installation guide. Joist spacing should never exceed 16 inches on center, but can be installed at 12 inches on center or less if a more rigid feeling deck is preferred. For angled installations, 12 inch on center joist spacing is required. Remember to use string lines often when adding additional joists to keep all joists in plane across the tops. Step 3. Install solid wood blocking between every joist. Solid wood blocking will help reduce independent movement from joist to joist and help provide a more flat and even surface for your timber tech deck. Blocking should be installed between each joist in rows 4 to 6 feet apart. Blocking can be staggered to ensure proper fastening. Solid wood blocking is typically the same size as the joists and should be securely fastened through the joist using exterior grade screws. Framing nails are not recommended for blocking, bridging, joist attachment, or any substructive application. Again, remember to use string lines as the blocking is installed to ensure that tops of joists are in plane. Blocking must not exceed the height of the joists to keep the top surface in plane. Depending on the design of your timber tech deck, additional blocking may be required. For picture frame designs, additional support is needed around the perimeter of the substructure to properly support and for secure fastening. For multiple length deck designs, double blocking is required for all butt joints. However, for our TimberTech Advanced PVC decking line, this is not required for applications utilizing top lock or cortex. Double joists are required at all butt joints for all other TimberTech decking fastening options. For frame mount protruding posts, additional blocking is needed around the post. For top mount railing posts, additional blocking is needed beneath the decking to handle the load of the railing post and to meet building code requirements. Always check the particular railing post manufacturer's guidelines for specific blocking requirements. 
For our last step, apply TimberTech ProTac joist tape to the top of the joists to extend the life of your decking substructure. This will help prevent water penetration and will protect the joist from rot. Select the tape width that allows for overhang on each side and apply to clean, dry lumber. Apply the top of the joist, preferably with a hand roller, and try to avoid wrinkles and air bubbles during application. With your safety checks, joist spacing, blocking, and tape application complete, you are now ready to install your new TimberTech decking.